the control text function will allow us to control text in a playout device. So if you're using Viz Trio, Viz Content Pilot, or Viz Template Wizard to create templates for playout, you can use this control text to give operators control to be able to change text. And the way that it works is that we'll use it right on text. So I'm going to drag a font down here. And I'm just going to reposition this font over here so that we can see a little bit better. And I'm going to copy this font three times and I'll spread this out a little bit. Now we'll just come in here into each text thing and change the text a little bit. So this will, will be title one. We'll make this one title two. And we'll make this one title three. So I also want to group these together. So I'm going to highlight the last one hold down shift and highlight the first one, then that selects them all. I'm going to throw these into a group. And I'm going to go back into my built-ins, grab my control text, and I'm going to slide this onto the very first text container here. Notice when we did that, it threw this control object onto the topmost group. It's always the best practice to throw all your containers into a topmost group. That way, when you do use the control plugins, this control object always gets thrown to the top group. And you need this control object for Viz Trio, Content Pilot, or Template Wizard to be able to read the scene. So I'm going to come into my control text editor. First thing that we have here is a field identifier. Now this is our first line of text here. So this number one is fine. I'm going to leave that as is right now. We can also give it a description here. So I'm going to type in title one here to match my text. Now I also have variables in here to give the operator specific options to change this text. And one of these things is maximal characters set to negative one by default. We could change this to 20. If we change it to 20, this means that they would only be able to type in 20 characters. Negative one means that it's off. So now with negative one set, they'll be able to type unlimited characters. There's an option here for uppercase. If we turn this on, they'll only be able to type uppercase characters with it off they can type upper and lower we can expose the kerning for them so if you want to give them the ability to kern out your font you can you can also turn on line spacing so if you want to give them the ability to space out the lines you can there is an expose font if this is on it's going to give them the chance to swap out a font for a different font you can also give them the ability to expose the justification and a single line. If single line is on, they will only be able to type a single line of text. They will not be able to hit return and type a double line. Now there's also an input value down here. And once you hit refresh, it's going to take the text that's written in the text box and put it in here. So I'm going to add another control text function onto my second line of text. And the big difference here is that we need to do is change this field identifier to two. And this is two because it's our second line of text that we want to be able to change. Again, we have our options here that we can turn on or off for them. So if there are specific things you want them to be able to do or not do, you can use and set that within these parameters here. So I'm going to grab another control text and I'm going to drag it onto my third line of text here. And again, go into my control text editor. And since this is our third line of text, I'm going to change the field identifier to three. Again, I can change the description if I want. It's okay if you just leave it at the default setting. But again, we have our options here to change if we want. So we can go ahead and save this and we'll just do a save as here and we'll navigate to a folder where we want to see it. We'll just say, give it a name of control text. We'll hit OK. So we can go over into Trio, which is a playout device for Viz Artist, and test this out. So once I'm in Trio, I'm going to come over here into the import scene. I'm going to navigate to my folder structure where I save that scene. And here's my control text. And I'm going to slide this right over into this window here. And I'm going to double click on it and take us into the preview window. So our first thing that we have here first, it gives you a preview, Title 1, Title 2, Title 3. And in the lower left here in the tab fields, you can see each one of these field identifiers. Our field identifier 1, our field identifier 2, our field identifier 3. Now for each one of these lines of text, we turn on different variables. So first, if I come back into my field identifier of one, you see if it gives us a text line here that we can change. So we could type in a new line of text here. If you see a plus sign here in the tab field, then we usually have some additional options that we can change. And in this particular case, we gave them options such as justification, kerning, line spacing. So in any of these, we can now give them the ability to change how they want to manipulate this text. 
and we can come down to title two here and it allows us to change this so if we want to type in another title here with this one and same with title three we can change the text for this one now we didn't give them too many controls on two or three so you can see that the only ability that we have here is to change the text unlike one where we have other options for kerning justification and things like that